there's a funny sort of Doctor Who line in my family. I, I never saw this episode. Um, I was probably two or three years old, and my father, Philip Bond, was the first person to be killed by a Dalek. I was very excited to be such a baddie. And I was very excited to work with Elizabeth, because, of course, I'm the generation who remember her as Sarah Jane, um, the Doctor's assistant. And the Doctor she started with was John Pertwee. And I was at primary school with his children. They're both a bit younger than me, but I remember uh, John Pertwee coming to open the school fate. There was an immense buzz when John Pertwee came to the school because we all knew him, we'd all been watching him, and we were about eight and nine, so no, it was thrilling. Elizabeth was such a kind, generous person. I think that she had embraced being given the opportunity um, to reinvent Sarah Jane as a mature woman. She was wonderful to be on set with, she was funny. Um, no, it was a lovely experience. When we did the first read-through of the first episode that involved Mrs Wormwood, I was actually on stage in London during the evening. But the read-through was taking place in Cardiff and I had to have a fitting um, and then the read-through and then people were having sandwiches and the whole thing was getting later and later. And I knew that I had to be in a car at five to three to catch the 20 past three train back to London. I'm watching my watch and we're turning pages, reading, and I work out quite quickly that there's no way I'm going to be able to stay till the end of the episode. So I'm coming up to my last line, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to tear to the door, and then I realise what my last line is. And there was a little pause and I went, I'll be back. I got a very good round of applause as I exited. One of the thrills of the script was that it was Russell T. Davis himself, so it made it very funny. I love being a baddie and I don't get to do it very often, I don't know why. Um, but it, it was, it's also a wonderful script because it can make the grown-ups laugh without the children not understanding what's happening. So it, it was just a joy to do. One of the lovely things about the Sarah Jane Adventures is that when it went out on television, my nephews and niece were all about four or five and um, they had no knowledge or understanding of what their aunt did at all. And then I was hosting Christmas and all the grown-ups were, you know, in the sitting room end and I was in the kitchen roasting potatoes or something. And suddenly these three little people came up to me and went, you're on the television. And I went, yes, I am. And then one of them said, are you a goodie or are you a baddie? And I went, well, obviously, I'm a goodie. It's me. I never expected to be reviving Mrs Wormwood. It's thrilling to be here. And also, radio is one of my great passions. Um, so when I got the invitation, I was delighted to accept. No, it's been lovely being back with everyone. Um, it's funny because they've all grown older. I suppose I have too. But it's, it's lovely being back with the team um, and, you know, Sarah Jane continues. There's a huge freedom in audio as opposed to, uh, you know, film or television work. And it's mainly vanity because when you're filming or shooting for television, you're constantly aware of how you might look or what face you might be pulling. And of course, in an audio studio, none of that matters. All that matters is the truth of what you're doing. Very liberating. It was remarkably easy 
to re-find the character. Uh, most of it is in the lines. It's a very good script. Um, uh, I didn't do much preparation except read the script several times. But no, she was very easy to rediscover. It very much is, going back to the anecdote about I'll be back, Wormwood is back. She's conniving, she's searching for something, and she is a very determined woman. <laughs>